the 1960s, a time of radical change, miniskirts, the moon landing, and in the automotive world, a thrilling new engine promised to change everything, the rotary. Imagine a power plant smoother than a freshly waxed Aston Martin, smaller than a bread box, yet capable of delivering power that would make a Ferrari blush. That was the promise of the rotary engine, and for a while it seemed like the future of motoring had arrived. Car enthusiasts were captivated. Here was an engine unlike anything they'd seen before. No pistons, no clattering valves, just a spinning triangle whirling within a chamber, generating power with an almost turbine-like smoothness. It was different, it was exciting, and it promised to revolutionize the way we drove. Manufacturers, ever eager to embrace the next big thing, jumped on the rotary bandwagon. Alfa Romeo, known for their screaming V6S, dabbled in the world of spinning triangles. American Motors, desperate for a technological edge, saw the rotary as their savior. Even General Motors, the behemoth of Detroit poured millions into developing rotary-powered cars. The future, it seemed, belonged to the Wankel engine. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jeremy, how in the bloody hell does a rotary engine even work? Well, imagine a triangle, but not just any triangle. This one's a bit chubby, like it's been indulging in too many pints and sausage rolls. This triangular rotor you see spins around inside an oval-shaped chamber. As it spins, this eccentric rotor creates three separate chambers that constantly change in volume. These chambers, my friends, are where the magic happens. First, a fuel-air mixture gets sucked in, just like in your granddad's lawnmower engine. But here's where things get interesting. The rotating rotor compresses this mixture, squeezing it tighter than a Scotsman's wallet. Next, a spark ignites the compressed mixture, causing a mini-explosion that forces the rotor to spin even faster. Finally, the burnt gases get shoved out of the exhaust port, making way for a fresh batch of fuel and air. And the whole cycle repeats, smoother than a pint of Guinness on a hot day. While others faltered, Mazda went all in on the rotary and boy did they make it work. They took this quirky engine, ironed out its kinks and created some of the most iconic sports cars the world had ever seen. The RX-7, that little pocket rocket, became a legend on both road and track. With its high-revving, free-breathing engine, it could dance with Porsches and leave them for dead on a twisty back road. And then there was the RX-8, a four-door coupe that proved practicality didn't have to be boring. It had those funky suicide doors, a sleek profile, and of course that unmistakable rotary soundtrack. Mazda proved that with enough dedication and a bit of Japanese engineering magic, the rotary could be a true contender. They showed the world that this unconventional engine could deliver both performance and reliability, silencing the doubters and carving out a unique place in automotive history. Now, Alfa Romeo, those Italian stallions, they like to do things their own way. They're known for their beautiful designs, their sonorous engines, and their, shall we say, unique approach to reliability. So it's no surprise that they were tempted by the allure of the rotary engine. Imagine a rotary-powered Alfa, a car that combined Italian flair with the smoothness of a thousand cappuccinos. They even built a few prototypes, like the Alfa Sud TI Rotary, a little hatchback that promised to be a proper giant killer. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. The rotary Alfa Sud, despite its potential, fell victim to the oil crisis of the 1970s. Fuel economy, you see, was never the rotary's strong suit and with fuel prices skyrocketing, Alfa Romeo was forced to shelve their rotary ambitions. It was a sad day for petrol heads everywhere, as the dream of a rotary-powered Alfa Romeo faded like a whisper in the wind. Section 5, AMC's Pacer Problem, a rotary revolution that wasn't. Over in America, another carmaker saw the rotary as their ticket to the big time. American Motors, bless their cotton socks, were struggling to keep up with the big boys of Detroit. They needed something different, something groundbreaking, something rotary-powered. Enter the AMC Pacer, a car that looked like it was designed by a committee of people who'd never actually seen a car before. It was quirky, it was innovative, and AMC had high hopes that it would be the car to put them back on the map. They even went so far as to design the Pacer specifically for a rotary engine, but then reality bit. The rotary engine AMC had pinned their hopes on turned out to be a thirsty beast, thirstier than a camel in the Sahara. And with the oil crisis in full swing, AMC was forced to abandon their rotary dreams and shoehorn a conventional piston engine into the Pacer's engine bay. It was a sad end to a promising idea. 
Section 6 GM's Rotary Dreams, Corvettes, Monzas, and Vegas. Oh my, now General Motors. They were like the rich kid on the block, always eager to get their hands on the latest toys. So naturally, they couldn't resist the allure of the rotary engine. They poured millions into developing rotary-powered cars, dreaming of a future where Corvettes hummed with the sound of spinning triangles. They even built a few prototypes like the XP882 Aerovet, a mid-engined monster that promised to give Ferrari a run for its money. They experimented with rotary-powered Chevrolet Monzas and even considered putting a rotary in the humble Chevrolet Vega, but alas, it was not to be. The rotary engine, despite its many charms, proved to be a fickle mistress. It was complex, it was thirsty, and it struggled to meet increasingly stringent emissions regulations. In the end, GM, like so many others, was forced to admit defeat and abandon their rotary dreams. Section 7. The Challenges why the rotary faltered. The rotary engine, despite its many virtues, had its fair share of flaws. Its Achilles heel, as any self-respecting petrol head will tell you, was its thirst for fuel. It was like trying to quench a Scotsman's thirst for whiskey with a teaspoon. And with the oil crisis of the 1970s, fuel efficiency became more important than ever. Then there were the emissions. Rotary engines, with their unique combustion process, tended to produce higher levels of unburnt hydrocarbons. And as environmental regulations tightened, the rotary engine found itself on the wrong side of the law. Reliability was another issue. While Mazda managed to engineer their rotary engines for durability, other manufacturers struggled to match their success. Apex seals, those critical components that sealed the rotor to the housing, were prone to wear and tear, leading to oil leaks and reduced performance. The rotary engine, it seemed, was a bit of a diva, demanding constant attention and expensive maintenance. Section 8. A Legacy of Innovation, The Rotary's Enduring Impact The rotary engine, despite its relatively short lifespan as a mainstream power plant, left an indelible mark on automotive history. It proved that there was more than one way to skin a cat, or in this case, power a car. It captured the imagination of a generation, inspiring countless engineers and enthusiasts with its unconventional design and its promise of a different kind of driving experience. The rotary engine may not have conquered the world, but it showed us that innovation is alive and well in the automotive industry. It was a bold experiment, a daring departure from the norm, and while it may not have achieved mainstream success, it reminded us that the pursuit of a better, more exciting driving experience is always worth pursuing. Section 9 Rotary Revival – A Glimpse into the Future So, what does the future hold for the rotary engine? Is there any chance that this quirky, unconventional power plant could make a comeback? Well, never say never in the world of automobiles. With advancements in material science and engine management systems, some believe that the rotary engine could be poised for a revival. Mazda, the champion of the rotary, has hinted at its return, suggesting that it could be used as a range extender in hybrid and electric vehicles. Imagine a future where the smooth, high-revving nature of the rotary engine is combined with the efficiency of electric power. It's a tantalizing prospect, and one that could see the rotary engine roar back to life in the 21st century. Only time will tell if the rotary engine can overcome its past challenges and find a new lease on life. But one thing's for sure, the automotive world is a more interesting place with the rotary engine in it.